Hi Church, my name is Nicodemus and this is my lovely wife Sandra. From the time I was a baby, I was looked after by my relatives as my parents were very poor and had to work long hours. As children, we did not have any toys. My parents were cleaners and whatever toys we had were picked from the rubbish pile. I had a rough childhood. I didn't speak a word until I was four years old. My parents thought I was either mute or intellectually disabled. I was beaten excessively by my mother, almost daily, for every slight mischief. Once, I was slapped so hard by my father that a few of my teeth flew out. I bled profusely throughout the night. At times, my parents would use a wooden rod, and when I hid under the bed, they would drive me out with bamboo poles. It came to a point where I would stop running altogether and would just stand still and let my mother trash me. I became physically and emotionally numb. Even at the tender age of six, I already experienced suicidal ideation, wanting to jump from heights, and this lasted all throughout my teenage years. I did not feel loved and questioned my existence. In primary school, I exhibited behavioral issues and became a bully. Because our family was poor, I was steal from my classmates, stuff that I didn't have. To earn pocket money, I would sell origami and live spiders. When my teachers caught me, they would punish me and single me out in front of the whole school and classify me as a bad example. As a result, I felt very condemned. As he grew older, Nick continued to mix with the wrong company, smoking, spewing expletives and bullying others. In fact, his ambition in life was to make it big in the gangster societies in Singapore and be feared and respected. Yet at the same time, he was also getting more depressed, emotionally shut and socially withdrawn. Nick failed his O-level English with an E8 grade. In fact, he never passed a single English test throughout his secondary school days. Entering the poly, he moved on to mixing with an older crowd, got involved with gambling, pubbing and heavy drinking. He stayed away from home, just wasting his life away. By the time his poly classmate invited him to City Harvest's Easter service in 1998, Nick had not been able to cry for eight years due to being emotionally shut down and numb. But when he heard the Easter message, tears began to flow down uncontrollably as he felt waves of God's love washing over him. God was unlocking his emotions and softening his hardened heart. He literally ran down the steps of Hollywood Theatre when the altar call was given. As he said the sinner's prayer, the healing power of God did a work in his heart. And Nick spoke in tongues, even though he didn't even know what it was. And since then, his life took a dramatic turn. He regained a sense of hope, and that enabled him to break free from all his addictions. After witnessing the transformation of, his bro- of her brother, Nick's sister also accepted Christ a month later, and subsequently his cousins too. Eventually, his parents saw the change in him, and they too received Christ. Amen. Amen. One area Jesus really changed me was in my studies. From a perennial poor student, God gave me the grace to focus. I began to score distinctions after distinctions. I became the national champion in the Youth Skill Olympic in 1998 in the electronics category. I topped the engineering cohort in Singapore Poly in 1999. And I received the Lee Kuan Yew Award for Top Technologist in 1999. Praise God. Amen. In church, I joined the Jams Ministry in January 1999 and I found my niche serving people with intellectual disabilities. Joining the James Ministry shaped my destiny and my future. In the year 2001, I felt God's calling to be a social worker after listening to Pastor Kong preach about the culture mandate. While in NS, I appealed to NUS unsuccessfully for a change in course. Eventually, God opened the door for me to study in Australia. I was granted the Golden Jubilee Scholarship by the University of New South Wales and was allowed to change my course from electronics engineering to social work. The total value of the scholarship was about $50,000, and it covered school fees but not living expenses. 
It also required me to fork out $10,000 as proof of financial ability to apply for the student visa. My parents were both retrenched and had no savings. I tried to apply for a study loan, but was rejected by several banks. Through the CSC's Education Assistance Scheme, I successfully applied for a student bursary, which provided for the startup costs and allowed me time to find work to sustain myself through the rest of my university days. I had a very difficult first year in the university. I did not speak well and scored very low on presentations. I also experienced writer's block and couldn't understand the academic writings. Having to study extra hard and work and, and worry about finances constantly, I felt the fear of failure coming back to me. The pressure of the scholarship weighed heavily upon me and I could feel myself growing increasingly depressed. However, this time, I had a church family. Pastor Lili from James Church would call me to encourage me, and I would email Pastor Tan to update both him and Pastor Kong on the progress of my studies. The leaders of the church believed in me and the future God has in store for me. And that was what spurred me to press on. When Sun launched her first album, Sun With Love, I knew that Nick would be blessed by it, and so I sent him a copy. Her songs brought comfort, assurance, and a strong presence of God. Nick would listen to the album while he did his assignments. Sun's crossover project also inspired him to study hard to become an influencer in the marketplace. His grades began to improve from below average to breakthrough over 90 marks by the time he reached his fourth year of study. In 2006, he graduated top of his cohort with Honours Class 1 and received a university medal for an outstanding mark that is significantly above the requirements of a first-class honours. And after his studies, he enrolled in SOT and became better equipped with ministry, in ministry and in his calling. In his job, he received eight, a total of eight promotions and is currently heading an elder care service that has received much ministerial and made media attention. They were recognized by the Prime Minister Office for their contributions in building an inclusive society in September 2012. And Nick was also invited to the F1 Grand Prix at the Tomasic Suite, hosted by Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong and graced by President Tony Tan, various other ministers and foreign heads of states. Last month in December, I was informed by the Australian government that my scholarship application for direct PhD studies has been granted. On top of the Endeavour Award, I will be receiving the prestigious Prime Minister Australia Asia Postgraduate Award. It is the highest form of scholarship awarded by the Australian government. The total value of the award is a quarter of a million dollars. I would not have come so far if not for God and this great church and all its leadership who have believed in me even when there was nothing to believe in. I look forward to coming back after my studies to serve along, alongside our church in bringing much value and influence in our society. Thank you, City Harvest. Thank you. Thank you.